Hey, welcome back. So in this video, let's take a look at how to do two things. One, uh, we'll talk about how to remove this flicker and save those settings in your spectrum analyzer and, uh, and also adjust the horizontal um, position of your CRT screen so it doesn't look all wacky. That's number one. Number two, uh, we'll look at how to calibrate uh, the spectrum analyzer. Um, we'll do calibration at two levels. One is the main calibration between the cal out and the RFN. Uh, and then the second calibration is uh, with the tracking generator if your scope has one or if your analyzer has one. So this one uh, does have a built-in tracking generator so we will be calibrating that as well. So uh, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. One, as you can tell, there's a, um, a message here that says oven cold. Before you uh, calibrate, uh, give it a few minutes and let the unit warm up and that message goes away. And you want to wait till then for the best results. So I'm going to let it sit. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to talk to you about... Um, how to fix the the flicker issue and also talk about how to set it um, in your spectrum analyzer so that when you boot it up the next time around uh, those settings stay put um, typically I leave my settings in a normal mode because one if you can look at the top left hand corner there is the HP logo and then there's a date time on the top uh, that's how I like it because um, if you switch it to NTSE, that date time kind of falls within the uh, the plotting zone, uh, which I usually don't like uh, because it kind of obstructs the view sometimes. So I like this view when I'm working, uh, but for video shoots, this flicker can get annoying sometimes. So um, anyways, I thought I'd mention that. Uh, but for this, uh, for the purpose of today's video, uh, let's uh, tackle how to remove this flicker, how to save the settings, and make sure the settings are saved so that when you boot it up the next time, it starts from where you left, uh, where you left off. Uh, so let's get going here. Um, for you to uh, remove the flicker, you need to change the uh, the sync settings on your spectrum analyzer. For that, you would go into config, which is uh, this button here. Um, and then let's click on that. When you click on that, uh, you would then go into the, the config menu. Let's see if I can get you a better view. Okay, so that should be good. Um, for now, uh, we are in the config menu. Uh, at the bottom here, you'll see more one of three. Let's click on this uh, soft menu button here to get to three of three and on this section here you see there's a sync NTSC normal uh, default sync and sync um, normal and pal uh, I would like to set that to NTSC and then wh when I do that keep an eye on the screen uh, take a look at how the screen kind of changes not only with the flicker, yeah, we will lose a flicker, which is great, but we will also end up with some weird looking screen um, rendering. So let's keep an eye on that. Uh, keep an eye on this date time, uh, the margins around the screen and so forth. So let's uh, select NTSC. All right, so now the flicker is gone like I said, but you're also um, handed this uh, chopped HP logo on the top and the date time kind of uh, lands in the, the plotting zone. And then the margins are all screwed up. Um, as you can tell, this uh, it's really hard for you to look at uh, all of these characters on, these, uh, on this far right hand uh, side of the screen here. So one way to fix that is to change the horizontal position and you can also mess with the vertical position 
So let's go into Cal, which is uh, this button here. And then let's select that. Um, it's hard to see. Um, so if you kind of scoot over to the left, you see how the, that menu item is kind of tucked behind those soft buttons. Um, let's, uh, let's go into page. It says page one of four here, by the way. So let's click to page two of four. And then there's the vertical and then the horizontal position, CRT Horiz position, select that. And now um, <clears throat> you're in the horizontal position change setup. Use your dial to scoot it to the left so that it's comfortable for you to kind of look at all of these characters. Um, it depends um, on your personal taste, so I'll leave it at that maybe. And now there is a uh, a button here on the on the far right hand corner, which is uh, this button here. Uh, it's hard to tell, but if you look in the bottom here, it says Enter. Select that, and that's saved right now. You can also now go into the vertical. position if you prefer I don't need to change mine but if in case you are you were wondering the vertical position will fix this logo chop issue I tried that that doesn't really fix anything it basically um, pants the the picture up and down it doesn't do much with the uh, the logo so anyways I'll set it at that and hit enter again and so that's that's it so now your screen has a better aligned margins yeah you're losing time uh, you're losing the, the the logo a little bit um, for me the biggest concern is uh, this date time kind of sticks within the the plotting zone uh, which I usually want to avoid when I'm working so uh, so that's how you do that now let's go back to I want to I want to make these settings uh, uh, so that they persist Right, so that when you reboot your machine next time around, um, uh, these settings can be recalled. So go into config, and then go to, uh, or rather not config, my apologies, go into this button called save here on, on this section, click save, and then where it says internal, this very top menu item, uh, state uh, to internal, so it saves the current state to your internal uh, memory. Select that and then press enter. And that's completed. Now when you reboot your, your PC or rather <laughs> reboot your spectrum analyzer, uh, it recalls a state and uh, that state is persisted till you change it the next time around. So that's a quick view of how you change the, the vertical, horizontal position, saving your settings and fixing the, uh, the flicker issue for video shoots, if any. Uh, but I honestly, when I'm working, I switch it back to normal so that uh, I like the way it, it, uh, it renders, especially the date and time. All right, so now that we've covered that, let's switch on to the next uh, part of this video, which is to calibrate uh, the spectrum analyzer and let me get this set up and I'll be right back all right um, get yourself a short run of uh, this BNC cable uh, these there's this port here called Cal out um, you want to connect that to your input port here I have a, a DC blocker here uh, and then I got an adapter from N to B and C. Uh, so I'm going to get, um, I'm going to plug this other end into the Cal out. And for you to calibrate, like I was uh, mentioning earlier, you want to wait till that um, oven cold uh, message kind of disappears. Right now the unit is warm and I think that's the right time to do your calibration. So let's start with step one doing a uh, the core or the main calibration uh, through this cal out port let's plug in our 
BNC, now the Cal Out and the RFN are connected and you will see various uh, frequency and harmonics kind of spit out by the, the Cal Out. And now that you've done that, let's go into, I'm going to zoom in a little so you can get a better view of this. I'll be right back. All right. So I hope this is a better view. Um, so for you to calibrate after you plug in your Cal with the RFN, um, you need to now go into this Cal button on this uh, far right hand corner of your screen here and click that and then you can calibrate um, frequency or calibrate the amplitude or you can calibrate both frequency and amplitude so let's suppose you got this machine brand new or new to you and you want to you want to calibrate this I typically for the first time around I will uh, want to do the frequency and amplitude together now just so you know uh, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos calibration the core the core calibration takes anywhere between 7 to 10 minutes depending on how many options you have in your spectrum analyzer and so forth um, so uh, let's um, let's click that, and I'm gonna speed this up a little. That way, you're not watching um, this go through. But uh, but let's let's get this started by pressing on the um, the cal frequency and amp and amplitude. So this kind of goes through the process. Uh, you will hear various uh, clicking sounds. Uh, that's the internal relays or solenoids. They sound more like solenoids to me. Um, and it goes through the various uh, workflow of calibrating uh, the settings and whatnot. So I let this run and I will speed this up in the final video so you don't have to look at this uh, for whatever, seven, ten minutes. Uh, so I'll let this run for now. One thing I would call out here while you're looking at this, you see the star here, what's that, what's that telling you is that it's waiting. Uh, it's like an hourglass. This is the old school hourglass. But that star is telling you that it's waiting on something to complete. Um, so you will see that come on and off as the calibration goes through its, uh, its, its workflow. Okay, so it looks like the, the calibration is completed and uh, I'll post um, the time it took um, between when we started and when it completed in the, in the video post-production so you have an idea. Again, the, the duration depends upon how many options you have in your spectrum analyzer. Sometimes it might be longer than, than otherwise, right? Depending on how many choices or other options you have in your, in your equipment. All right, so now that you've completed the, the core calibration, let's look at, um, look at uh, calibrating the tracking generator. 
uh, because uh, this equipment, this spectrum analyzer has a built-in uh, tracking generator and let's see how to calibrate it um, using a very simple method. Let me get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to unplug your BNC uh, from your Cal out and into your RF out on your tracking generator. Again, I have an end connector and then an adapter for BNC here. So let's put that in here. All right. So right now, the RF out from your tracking generator is fed into the RF input of your spectrum analyzer. All right, so to calibrate your tracking generator, uh, go into Cal, this uh, top right hand, uh, let me see if I can scoot a little bit. Uh, on your top right hand corner of your screen, the Cal button again. And then let's go into page three or four. And then there's this option here called calibrate tracking generator so let's select that and that goes through the process of tracking or rather calibrating it uh, track gen this should take a much shorter time um, because we are only calibrating um, the tracking generator and it should be done fairly soon like I said it's already done it says Calibrate tracking generator done. So that's it. It took less than a few seconds here. All right. Sometimes I, the first time when I did it, it took me about a minute or two. Um, I guess it depends. Um, um, but that's good. So that's how you do your um, tracking generator calibration and the core calibration. I hope this was useful and uh, all right with that thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll talk soon and uh, God bless. Mm -hmm.